Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. It is Saturday, December 16th, 2023. I'm your host, George Kurt, joined by a maybe familiar face. That's Tyler Kemp. Tyler, how you doing? How's it going, George? Thank you for having me on. <laughs> that is special guest and betting expert, Tyler Kemp, but we know it was Kempy. And actually, what I was trying to joke you guys about, the triumphant return of one Tyler Snyder. Tyler, how are you? I left. <laughs> I didn't... I didn't realize I left. I'm not a, wasn't I here last week? Um, uh, how long has it been since you listened? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm in a, was I in a coma? <laughs> no, not quite. But happy to have you back. I missed you. The banter is always just a little bit more off the rails with you here. And I think adding in Kempy here as well, which I don't know if you two have ever been on an episode together, but I'm sure this is going to be a wild ride. We might not even talk football. Honestly. What's football? Never heard of it. <laughs> Anyway, um, as a reminder, you guys, we have new, new episodes every Friday during the season, except for today. We got Saturday, but we also have Saturday football. So you have a, a jam-packed Saturday here. Couch GM's getting you ready for these games coming this weekend. And Cody does a bonus episode on the Couch GM's World Cup every week, a little earlier in the week. So make sure you go check that out, especially this week as we broke down the playoffs and how they're going to begin in the Couch GM's World Cup. Uh, follow us on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at the Couch GMs. And as always, feel free to send us a DM with your fantasy questions each week. All right, guys, why don't we sit back, relax, and chat? And then I have to do Cody's job. And... See, guys, th this is uh, off the rails just without Cody. He's a little sniffly today, but... Um, We'll get Snyder. Are, are we allowed to be live? Like, I don't think that should be happening in any circumstance <laughs> whatsoever. I should but... never be live ever. <laughs> but let's see how it goes. Yes. Oh, exactly. yeah. Let's we're going to have to say Snyder and Kemp. We can't just say Tyler. We're both. Yeah. I mean, I I, know I, Andrew earlier, to... George is like, hey, if you're going to hop on the podcast, Kempy's on. So, two Tylers and me, it's going to be a George sandwich. So, I'm really uncomfortable. I almost didn't come on here today just because I don't want to be a George sandwich. I would totally change our layout to just make me in the middle, but I don't see a way that that happens. So we're just going to stick with this. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, we got to talk a little bit of Thursday Night Football, which you don't normally get to do since we record before Thursday Night Football. But I don't know what the heck happened on Thursday this week. Uh, it led to Brandon Staley, head coach of the Chargers, getting fired. They're obviously still down Justin Herbert, who's going to be out for the season with that finger injury. Uh, can either of you guys figure out how to put into words what the heck in Madden we saw on Thursday Night Football? I have no <laughs> idea. I, I went into the game thinking, okay, we got two not-so-great teams. We got injuries on both sides, replacement backup quarterbacks. Primetime Amazon game usually results in no touchdowns or just a horrible game, and it provided the opposite. We saw touchdowns being scored left to right by the Raiders, and eventually the uh, Chargers joined. But, I mean, Jacoby Myers throwing a touchdown. Those pick sixes, I think we had two pick sixes or maybe a forced fumble, but one awesome pick six in the, uh, towards the uh, third quarter there. But, hey, it turned out to be a great Thursday. <laughs> Not a competitive Thursday, but a very entered entertaining thursday i guess uh, hey the chargers tied 21 21 in the second half and still lost by 40 something points that's impressive in its own feet <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna lie i uh i work early in the morning so i went to bed after the first quarter but i still feel like i you saw already an entire knew it's worth of football <laughs> after the first quarter it was 21 nothing it was touchdown fumble touchdown fumble touchdown so i still feel like i got my a game's worth out of it you did. And uh, I just want to point out, I teased this on the bonus episode. I got a, a certain secret Santa gift from uh, one Kempy over here. And uh, gotcha. <laughs> if you guys know the joke that I'm an Eagles fan, um, I'm actually an Eagles fan, but they say I'm a Chargers fan. I feel like this shirt has brought on a whole nother meeting just from Thursday night football, considering how the Eagles are on a two game skid. The Chargers looked like a Pee Wee football team. It is for sure complicated <laughs> oh without a doubt without a doubt i bought that shirt well before the two games get from the the eagles as well as the blowout but one thing i wanted to mention i never even got to tell you guys i it is the beginning of the fantasy playoffs and i was super excited to be in i think i'm in five playoffs right now so i checked my, one of my teams out 
And I unfortunately was facing Devontae Adams, who scored a touchdown last night. That kind of killed me. I think he dropped about 18 points in the format. But I looked and I saw I had a 25% chance to win that matchup. It turns out I was also facing the Raiders defense, who absolutely murdered me to start the playoffs. And I have no hope going into Sunday. So uh, I, if anyone else faced the Raiders defense out there, I'm sorry. That hurt. But uh, once again, heck of a Thursday. I, uh, I, I did not face the Raiders defense. It's actually impressive that somebody's like, I want Raiders defense. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I do have some IDP leagues in which I have Max Crosby who just feasted. So, so that was a good start for me. I will say that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that one of those is the dynasty league where you're facing me, and I already didn't have a chance. And then on top of that, had Austin Eckler do his best is the best way I can put it. But there was no one around him not having Keenan Allen, not having Justin Herbert, having a team that looked like they were still in the locker room in the middle of the second quarter. Um, so I don't have much Which, hope there. But By the way, you text me saying, I have no hope in this matchup. You won because I'm missing Josh Jacobs. And then like 10 minutes later, the alert came that I'm going to be missing Keenan Allen. So, and I don't have any receivers in that league. I'm, I'm winning in that league because I have Christian McCaffrey and Derrick Henry as my two running backs. Like that is the sole reason uh, that I'm doing well. So I'm like, yeah, I just lost one of the only receivers I do have. But yeah, you have no shot. Classic George. Classic. Still have a 20% chance to win. But we'll see how it's going to break down and we can actually jump into some of these games and somebody that I think might be a sleeper for this week as we jump into our week 15 preview. I remembered to hit the button that time, guys. You're proud of me. I'm so proud. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, so I had a note on here just to remind everybody we're in the fancy playoffs by weeks. Finally, all done. I think a lot of us are happy about that after the whole week 13, everyone got excited in week 14, everyone did, or week 12, week 13, whatever it was. It all blends together at this point. How are we this far but, in the um, season anyway? What happened? Yeah. I feel like we blinked and it was week 15. Like, well, we I've were been in, in a coma for a month week. anyway. So, that, I mean, that's probably why it feels even shorter for you, but. That, and we have a special <laughs> appearance. Speaking of the break. <laughs> That is Mocha. I don't think Tyler can speak right now. He's getting yeah. licked in the face. If you have not seen it, go over to our YouTube. That's a uh, dogs and football is no better reason to go over to our YouTube and watch the rest of this episode. But um, I mentioned potential sleepers and we're going to talk about the Saturday slate, the one o'clock game, one o'clock East game with the Minnesota Vikings and the Cincinnati Bengals where not only did the Vikings announce Nick Mullins, their starting quarterback, but running back Alexander Madison is out. So a potential good running back sleeper if you're somebody who needs some help is Ty Chandler. Ugh, the the legacy of Josh Dobbs this season. <laughs> the career of Josh Dobbs in one year. It's just sorry. Um it feels yeah, like Chandler, a career. Definitely. You're right. <laughs> if you missed out on Zamir White, which I know a lot of people were trying to pick up and uh start in that Thursday game. If you missed out on him, Ty Chandler is another option that you can go get. Uh, if you are missing somebody like Josh Jacobs or if you have another injured player, um, I, I don't hate it. Uh, that's one of my mo most famous sayings is I don't hate it. I'm not thrilled with Ty Chandler. I'm not going to lie. Um, no Vikings running back has thrilled me all season long. So I don't know why we go to the third string and I'm like, oh, now I got to start this guy. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But if you're in a pinch, if you really need to throw somebody in there, you can. Hopefully you're not in that big of a pinch, though. It's the, it's the fantasy playoffs. Playoffs. And I I agree with that because thinking about it in, in the way the Vikings are looking right now, they're trending towards that losing game script. So unless you're telling me that Chandler picks up that role of Alexander Madison is that uh, receiving back, I, I don't really see the true value in him or the crazy hype. So like Snyder said, if there's anybody else, if you really need him at your weak 14 or 15 matchup right now in the playoffs, then there's you have bigger questions oh i have a lot of questions on that dynasty team but i'm gonna try to uh figure it out the best i can it's also funny we're talking about the vikings in a negative game script also against the backup quarterback the whole league is backup quarterbacks it looks like george froze on a perfect base by the way he's staring at us right now like it george weird wake it up <laughs> 
All right. Well, I will say that pretty much the entire league is backup quarterbacks at this point. Um, so it's kind of hard to say like, oh, hey, George is back. Hey, George is back. There we go. It's kind of hard to downplay Stop. anybody for having a backup quarterback because like you can go through the entire league. We got Vikings backup, Bengals backup, Steelers, Colts. I mean, it just read down the entire NFL. It's all backups or replacements or rookies or it's not your normal crop of quarterbacks that we've seen the last like 10 years that it's just like you expect to have these 10 dominant guys and then there's the rest of the league is mediocre. It's like there's like two dominant guys and the rest of the league is mediocre. It's uh it's a weird year. Even I'm the dominant just... guys are mediocre. I mean, look at the the guys that were really big from last year. Mahomes is throwing picks. Josh Allen, they won't stop talking about how many games in a row he's thrown picks. Uh Jalen Hurts hasn't been able to do anything for two weeks. Like it's been a really down year. The way we're trending, I'm, I'm interested to see that graphic when they get to the playoffs or especially around the conference championship games where they show the four quarterbacks remaining <laughs> in the league. And I remember going back to like the year it was Nick Foles, Blake Bortles, you know, Kirk Cousins. Was it Cousins at that point? No, it was, just it was like, um, um, Case Keenum. Case Keenum, yeah. So it and was Tom just Brady. like, <laughs> those are our four guys remaining. And I think the way the league is trending right now with the backup quarterbacks, that could be a situation we see or a picture we see in a couple weeks. Yeah, and it's just because there's nobody left standing. And it's like every single week we're adding another quarterback. So we're going to hope that doesn't happen again. Um, but yeah, I'm with you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys mentioned while I was out for a couple of seconds that Justin Jefferson's expected to be to play. Uh, he has a questionable tag. Keep an eye on him just in case. It's kind of good that he's your first game of the weekend besides Thursday. So if you do have to go to another option, you hopefully have one on your team. Um, Bengal side of the ball, playing your normal suspects, the mix in chase. That kind of deal. Yeah, George, while you were gone, we didn't really talk about players. We kind of just made fun of your face as it was frozen. So thank cool. you for covering that. You're welcome. That, that is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, guys, make sure you go over to the YouTube channel to see George's face um, and see a dog lick mine. So it's all about faces. And honestly, you can watch Kempi too. It's really hard to focus with that that mic jiggling constantly. So um, <laughs> no, it's bothered me too. <laughs> so as he makes a jiggle more. YouTube channel, see how... Uh, <laughs> See how much you can focus. Uh, we're going to try to focus on the four o'clock East game on Saturday with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Indianapolis Colts. Again, like Snyder said, uh, two more backup quarterbacks, but at least, you know, Gardner Minshew's kind of been starting for a few weeks now. It does not seem quite as much like a backup quarterback, even though he is. Kenny Pickett ruled out. Uh, so the Steelers going with Mitchell Trubiscuits. Um, and Jonathan Taylor still out for the Colts as well. Uh, those are the big injuries. Um, I'm surprised with some of the games that we see, like the over-unders this week, and we're going to kind of touch on some of them. A lot of them underneath 40 points. This one's still at 42 and a half. Um, are the Colts leading that? Are we having faith that the Steelers are going to find points? Like, I don't 100% know where they think points are going to get scored. I am extremely uncomfortable with this game from a betting perspective. When I looked, if you would have told me the Steelers versus the Colts last week or even two weeks ago, I would have said the Colts probably minus four or five and a half, especially with a backup quarterback, Mitch Trubisky, that has not looked good to start the year. The fact that this line is only minus one and a half scares me. And, and that's at home as well. So I am never a fan of feeling comfortable while, bet while betting. Because if, if you're too comfortable with the line, there's probably a good reason. And something tells me I really like the Steelers this week. It's just an odd betting line right there. I think that this is a rally behind the troops, rally behind Tomlin game. And I think the Steelers come out with it from a betting perspective. But what do you guys think from the fantasy wise? Uh, nope. <laughs> fantasy wise, <laughs> I'm benching everybody. Like, I mean, you got Michael Pittman. You can... You can make the argument for some of the Steelers receivers, uh, depending on how weak you are at the receiver position. But I mean, the league that I lost Keenan Allen, I have to start George Pickens. I don't love it, but I mean, I don't really have any other options. So it's either him or Donovan Peoples Jones. So welcome to Dynasty League, Pickens. though. Yeah. Yeah. You're going with Pickens Dynasty. there. I mean, I don't know um, if I could recommend Pickens in a redraft. Um, I don't even love playing Deontay Johnson just because he's been up and down. And I was really high on Deontay Johnson when he first came back from the injury and he had that stretch of like three straight weeks with 10 plus. And, but 
I I'm with you. I don't think I want to touch any Steelers. I don't feel comfortable in a single one. Um, I also don't feel comfortable in the Steelers. It seems like as much as Kempy does, but Michael Pittman is my guy. And then you could start Zach Moss, but Zach Moss has this, this iteration of Zach Moss has not been good as the early season in for Taylor while he was out on IR version of Zach Moss. Well, let's not say just the early season version of Zach Moss. Like Zach Moss wasn't good all year. He just had like 200 yards against the Titans and it made him look like he was good all year. I mean, he was booty cheeks. Still, I believe like two or three weeks ago, he's still third in the league in rushing. It wasn't just one 200 yard game. He is had that like impressive, another though? 150 yard game. And is that impressive? Know. Like Derrick Henry gets like 10 carries a game. The dude was averaging like 30 yards per game at one point, And everyone's like, man, he's washed. He's washed. He's still second in the league in rushing. Uh, despite all that, like it this year, rushing has not been good. You have Christian McCaffrey and you have everybody else. And, uh, it's just not been a good year for running backs. Committees have kind of killed a lot of things too. And I mean, you're talking about that with Derrick Henry, Tajay Spears too. We can get to the Titans game later. Move us on to the third game in the Saturday slate, the Denver Broncos and the Detroit lions lions host, you know, have one of those committee backfields as well, but they've both been pretty solid, at least since Montgomery has been back Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. Um, Liking both of them, and I'm also surprised with the Broncos defense being as good as it has been. They must be expecting the Lions to put up a lot of points, too, with a 48 over under. So if Vegas likes points, I like more fantasy players normally. And I agree with that. I think over the past couple weeks, we're seeing that Lions defense being exposed. They look so dominant to start the year, but I feel like you can confidently start any Broncos player you have at this point. I mean, if you own them, I'm not saying go ahead and just pick up their you know, fourth wide receiver. But if you have your Cortland Suttons, um, if you have Javante Williams, I would definitely be starting them. Jerry Judy's the question mark. He, it looked like he was involved a lot last week, but didn't really necessarily put up the points that was expected to. But uh, I, I definitely like starting the Suttons and the uh, Javante Williams this week. I actually want to give yeah. both of you guys credit. So when I was on with Cody, um, it was just Cody and I for a few episodes, we were kind of brushing over the Broncos in general because they don't have the running back. Russell Wilson was kind of wishy-washy. And both of you had said to me different times in text messages, like, Cortland Sutton's been fairly solid. And, like, we were kind of overlooking him. And then I looked back and saw he was, like, wide receiver 20, 22, something like that on the year. And I've been watching him a lot closer. And he makes a ridiculous touchdown catch every single week. He's putting up maybe not blow me away numbers, but like solid numbers every single week. So he's somebody I've really come around on. So I've been actually like looking closer at him specifically. Yeah, I don't I still don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anybody from uh, the Lions, Lions side that you're targeting? I mean, I think it's just the normal suspects. I mentioned the two running backs, Sam Laporta. I'm Ross St. Brown. Um, Jared Goff could be a, um, you know, a potential um, streamer play at quarterback. I know with all the quarterbacks out, Goff might be somebody you feel more confident in than half of these backups. I know that's a situation I'm in in a league. Uh, lost Herbert, have to play Goff somewhere. So, I think if you're in playing some daily fantasy, I would take a, a cheap flyer on Jamison Williams. I, I think for, for daily fantasy purposes, he really isn't that expensive, and he would be a good option to throw in there. I feel like he's going to have a pretty decent week. He's like somebody he's who's getting, getting better. Yeah. We've been, like, waiting for the outburst, and, like, a lot of people were very um, quick with the trigger that they drafted him. They put him on IR two weeks later. After he was activated, he was dropped, and he's taken a long time to come around, but he's finally showing some of that potential that we hoped we'd have out of him last season. Uh, so let's hope we can stay off the sports books and uh, stay on the field to begin next year. And maybe we'll get a full season of something decent out of him next year. Um, I'm feeling like we can move into Sunday. So we got the one o'clock East window on Sunday, leading off with the Kansas city chiefs and the new England Patriots Patriots underdogs by eight over under on this one, despite it being a chiefs game being at 37. So this is like the start of the stretch of games that I was talking about with these really bad over unders. Um, I mean, a lot of it has to do with backup quarterbacks. Offenses just haven't been clicking quite like they had been in past years. And the Chiefs are, I think, the big one in that. Like, they can't get consistent wide receiver play for 
anything. It's been just Travis Kelsey, and they have it, it's been showing by the fact that they are not the number one seed in the AFC right now. They have five losses. This is not your typical Chiefs team. This is a fantasy matchup. Surprisingly, if you'd have told me the Patriots versus Chiefs, I want to stay away from this fantasy matchup at all costs. I, I don't love Mahomes this week, and Mahomes, for the most part, I was just looking at his numbers. I think he's had one game above 20 standard fantasy points in the past seven weeks. So if that doesn't tell you enough at, right there, they're missing Pacheco. Uh, and think about what Belichick's got planned for that Kansas City offense, if you want to even call it an offense. He's going to double team Travis Kelsey, which leaves whoever you want out there. you know. And I, I don't love whoever you got out there for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Yep, I, I completely agree. I like Rishi Rice as like an option, like a flex option if your team is struggling right now. But uh, outside of him and yeah, even like Pacheco and Kelsey, I feel like they're sketchy. I feel like um, this is the first year that we were like, all right, finally, finally, I'm going to just do it. I'm going to draft Travis Kelsey in the first round, top five picks. And I feel like if you did, you're, you're low-key disappointed. Uh, it's not that he's had that bad of a season, but he's not having that normal Travis Kelsey season. So even a guy like him just is not as flashy as we'd like him to be. The only reason I'm going to argue on Mahomes, and I think that's the only person I want to argue on, I'm very sketched out about everybody else in this matchup, um, is because I don't know if I can name you 10 people I would play over Mahomes. Like Jared Goff would have to be in that conversation. Would either of you play Goff over Mahomes right now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then again, I've started golf all year long. Interesting. I, I think depending on the matchup, if I if I have Mahomes on my fantasy team, which I do in some leagues, and I had a reasonable matchup, I, I Mahomes is not a must start for me right now in the fantasy playoffs. To be honest, if you have that backup quarterback, and I'm not saying backup in the league, but if you have that second quarterback that's even remotely close and he has a good matchup, I might lean over Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. George, you look shocked right now, which is really funny to me because I know I haven't been on the podcast in like 37 years. However, the last time either I was on the podcast or the last time you and I discussed these kinds of things, we were like, dude, I think I'm going to bench Cooper Cup. And you're like, yeah, dude, bench Cooper Cup. He's not doing it right now. I, I don't trust him. Put him on your bench. And that is that the number one name for wide receivers. And it was so easy for you to be like, yeah, bench him. And yet quarterbacks... The position that you value the least in fantasy, you're like, you're you're gonna bench the number one name. It's all a name, and you can't. You're not gonna win championships just basing it off of the names. Um, I can tell you that I won a very very big matchup uh, in the one league that we're all together because I benched Cooper Cup and I started somebody else over him. Um, being able to make that decision is what won me that game, and I didn't get the buy like I was hoping, but uh, it still put me in a really good position in the playoffs. So. I'm surprised you're as shocked as you are. I think the only reason like it is quarterback. And I mean, you're hopefully going to find somebody that's going to get 15 points. And it's fine. But we talked about how many backup quarterbacks there are. And do I really want to go out there and play a Jake Browning in fantasy? Do I really want to go out there and play a Gardner Minshew? Uh, I don't even know. Jake Garrett Browning Carr, me last like, week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I get it. And like Jake Browning has been fantastic, but I don't know if I have the cojones to go out there and be like i'm playing jake browning in the fantasy playoffs like if you do and it works out for you 100 props but i'll go down with patrick mahomes and be like you know what maybe it was dumb i'm okay with being wrong with it all right let me give you one dumb, hypothetical. i mean all right one hypothetical okay you have next week you make you have patrick mahomes on your roster but you also have quarterback jordan love do you start Patrick Mahomes against Las Vegas Raiders, an individual matchup, or do you start Jordan Love against the Panthers? Is that an that easy case, Mahomes decision? I would probably go with Love, but Love's not one of those back of quarterbacks that I feel like I would have to. Like, Love might actually be one of the top 10. I might put Love over Mahomes most weeks right now, but he'd be one of those 10 that I'm like, maybe Mahomes falls eighth or ninth right now, and you know, maybe Love is sixth, but I don't know if I can name a full 10. But and, and that's just the thing. It's Mahomes, and while I, I I definitely agree that he's not an easy or he's not easy to bench, and there's not that many guys over him. I just think that in the fantasy playoffs right now, it, he's not the lock he's been for years. I get that. All right. 
we could agree there. I mean, I was being a little too bullish. So yeah, I'm with you guys. He's it's not like an automatic you're playing Patrick Mahomes regardless, but I'm not going out there and playing some of these backups over him at the same time. Um, I guess uh, no, one quick injury note before we get out of here, this game. Uh, Isaiah Pacheco is out again. I'm not saying I particularly love any of the backs in that backfield because um, it's going to be a big McKinnon and CEH split. Um, if you have to desperately pick one because you've been relying on Pacheco this year. In a PPR, I like McKinnon. Otherwise, I like CEH. I don't know what else to really say about that one. I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you said cool. it. It's good enough for me. I, I think I like the under in this game. I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points scored. <laughs> and Patriots that's already with it being down Chiefs at 37. Mm -hmm. Yep, the Chiefs are where they're at because of their defense, not their offense right now, which we didn't expect to say. Uh, next game on the slate is the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Um, Dolphins have injury issues still. Uh, Tyreek Hill listed as questionable, which would be a huge loss if he doesn't go. He did not participate all week, but knowing the Dolphins, I feel like there's a chance that they're just kind of doing some rep management with him and he's going to go. Uh, just keep an eye out because that is a very sketchy situation. Hill's got to be a guy, though, that if he goes, he's in your lineup. He's normal. He's wide receiver one right now. He could be fancy MVP. Um, so don't try to get cute with benching Tyreek Hill as long as he is a go. Uh, Devon A. Chan is also questionable. If he goes, him and Moster can both go in lineups still. They're both consistently putting up points. I don't understand how they do it, but I think it's just because the Dolphins score so much. However, the over-under for this game is 37. And the Jets' defense is, because, is good. Is it because we're expecting a 34-3 uh, to Dolphins? Or... <laughs> well, I mean, if you try to say like, oh, the spread's only nine points, then that is a pretty low score if you're expecting, because I don't think it's the Jets are going to score all that much. But I was thinking that at the same time, we saw this game on Black Friday and the Dolphins covered that over under by themselves. I'm pretty sure. At least it was close if they didn't already. Like, I was impressed to see it that low. And I know there was a failed Mary mix in that game um, to kind of push that over as well. Truthfully, I don't know where the Vegas lines are coming from right now with plus nine and over under 37. If they're leaning towards the side of Tyreek is playing or he's not playing. But if Tyreek's not playing, I am hammering the under as well in this, this game because you saw a Titans secondary last week who went into that game as one of the worst secondaries in the league, and they absolutely shut the Dolphins down. So if Tyreek's not in this game, I can't imagine what they're going to do or this great Jets secondary, what they're going to do that Titans or sorry, what they're going to do to that Dolphins offense without a Hill. So I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points if Hill is out of this game. Yeah. Cause so I trust the sauce can waddle down. Yeah. Completely on his own, which leaves the entire defense out there to stop the run. Um, and really the Dolphins outside of waddle Hill in the run game, don't have those extra weapons, those big flashy players. So um, I'm not worried about Derm Smythe is offended <laughs> yeah, that e either <laughs> bless you, whatever, <laughs> all of the above. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm impressed, honestly, with how out of sorts they looked without Tyree kill. I mean, Tyree kill is the ultimate weapon in the league right now, just because he's so fast. Defenses have to bracket him. It's impossible to put a single man on him even if it is somebody like the Jets secondary. But I think it's really sad to see how we learn that Jalen Waddle is a really good player and he's not necessarily good enough to step up and be that wide receiver one to open everyone else up around him. Uh, maybe it was just a fluke one week, but like that is the early sign of how it looks for this Dolphins offense. I mean, biased opinion, but I think it was a fluke one week. Personally, I think Waddle is that guy. I think he can do it. Um, the Titans are just a weird team. I told my wife before the game, I was like, look, I know the Titans are bad, and I will probably pick them to lose every single week. But this week, they're going against the Dolphins. This is the game that they have no chance in. They're probably going to win. And then they did. So, <laughs> like, it's wrong. they're a weird team. They only beat the best. That's They don't beat anybody else. Uh, I, I think, think it was a weird one week. Personally, do you guys think Garrett Wilson is a back to must start fantasy weapon now that Zach Wilson, as weird as it is to say, is the starter? Is he a must start or easy start? I should say. 
I wouldn't he say was doing start. Yeah. But I'd yeah. say he's a probable start. Like you probably don't have much better than him at this point. You're like, yeah, I got to throw him in my lineup. Um, however, I don't think he's like, a, oh, yes, he has to be in your lineup. Yeah, I'm with you there. Like Cody likes to say, he's a touchdown waiting to happen, and he just needs a quarterback that's decent. He has been doing better with Wilson at quarterback than he was with Tim Boyle or whatever else they've got there. Um, so it's their best chance. We'll see if they can put up more of a fight this week than they did on Black Friday. I can move us on to our next matchup with the New York Giants and the New Orleans Saints. Saints have Chris Olave in a similar situation to Tyree Kill where he has not participated in practice all week. He was listed as questionable. I think his status is a little bit more shady than Tyree Kill's even, so keep an eye out on that one. And the Giants, who are making a little bit of a run with Tommy DeVito, have Darren Waller potentially coming back this week. It looks like he's going to go. Uh, does that give the Giants any reason to have? Is there any excitement for any Giants other than Saquon Barkley now? No. <laughs> give me no, Taysom Hill appreciate- over Darren Waller still. I appreciate you trying to make it sound good, but um, no. If you would ask me to name three Giants wide receivers right now, I would struggle. They have three? I, if you, <laughs> I, maybe. <laughs> I think they still have Isaiah Hodgins. Um, Wanda, Rondale, Wondale Rondale Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. That's Golden two. Tate. <laughs> no, Sterling he's gone. <laughs> Is Sterling Shepard still there? Is he on injured reserve? I don't know. I, I feel like I haven't seen him anywhere else. So maybe he's still there. I don't know. Oh, that OBJ guy. That's right. OBJ. No, he's yes. gone. Yeah. yeah. Now he wears purple now, not blue. Um, <laughs> But, Eli Manning. Yeah, this Eli Manning playing wide receiver might be better than some of these guys right now, too. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um the Giants have actually oh, shown some light. Taysom Hill. But... What happened last week? Apparently, I didn't listen to the podcast and get any updates or news or anything, but I started Taysom Hill against Kempe in a league, and uh I didn't even see a questionable tag. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. I, I was a little distracted, no. but he ended up not playing, and I started him. I mean, I wouldn't have won regardless of who I played, but I was so disappointed. I thought, <laughs> I thought Taysom Hill doesn't get hurt. Whatever platform that was dropped the ball. He was on the injury report last week, um, and he is on the injury report this week. He was limited, limited full, and he's not listed at the game status, so he's going to be good to go this week. Feel free to keep him in the Okay, good, because I don't think I checked my um, lineup. But yeah, no, I was disappointed too. <laughs> you still have time this one's sunday um but yeah no it's he was on the injury report they didn't expect him to go it was all it's also sketchy too with the him versus Derek carr and james winston thing um he's better with Derek carr in the lineup that should be the way it's going this week so definitely can keep him in the lineup i mean you're going kamara i don't know if there's anyone else i really love here besides the names that we've said so we can move on to maybe an equally exciting matchup also down in the NFC South with the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. No significant injuries. Maybe there's not a lot of significance here either. Um, go ahead and tell me somebody you like in this game. Nose goes. I'm very disappointed. Uh, there's no connection. cricket sound in here from Cody. We need to add that. I was expecting nothing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Bichon? I like Bijan. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. He's been scoring yeah. some okay. touchdowns lately. Like Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Okay. There's a I, I don't know who that is. He has been blacked out of my memory banks, and I am never going to say his name again. Bro's been catching touchdowns. He's been catching passes. <laughs> he doesn't been... he doesn't catch touchdowns on American soil either. Like that's surprising. He's been he's been putting up points. I mean, maybe like eight points, but like that's more than most tight ends. So, I mean, I've been making an argument over the last five weeks for people like David and Joku, who's been going like eight, nine, ten, eight points. And I'm like, you know, that's actually one of the more consistent guys at the tight end position. So maybe Kyle Pitts is somebody to consider in the bucket. Okay. Kyle Pitts had one really good week. It was yeah. last week. It's and I was really watching him because I was, I put money on him. So, Ooh. 
Well, go ahead and put money on him again so our fans can uh, play Kyle Pitts and surprise some people. He's still averaging seven points per week, which puts him at tight end 14. It's really not bad. Um, It's kind of sad that a guy of Kyle Pitts, uh, I I don't want to say, I mean, really, he hasn't lived up to any hype, but I guess I should say a person of Kyle Pitts' hype, uh, seven points a week. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Seven points. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Go Kyle! Like <laughs> that's so disappointing. <laughs> the hype he had coming so in good. in the league. Mm-hmm. I remember in Madden the first year he was a rookie. Everyone wanted Kyle yep. Pitts because he was going to be the next big tight end, and this is what we have to work with. Yeah. By the way, uh, after watching that Madden Thursday night football game, which George is frozen again, you can go see his his Look beautiful his face. face. <laughs> I will have you know that Jamison Williams is receivers in madden and is really easy to trade for in madden for no good reason so if you uh if you like speed on your team which obviously you have to like speed on your team go get jameson williams he's fun to play with um how do we just move on without george until he just suddenly starts moving again or do we just keep i, I guess fun we of could i do want to mention i do like the panthers uh betting on the Panthers here. It's a weird feeling. The fact that the Falcons are like supposed to be such a better team and the lines only plus three inner division. I actually like the Panthers to cover, maybe even win outright out. Oh, and there goes George. Hi. All right. We got to stop talking about him. He's back. Yeah, no, for a moment there was just two Tyler's, but now we're back to a sandwich. <laughs> I can't makes me feel uncomfortable. You can saying it out loud. <laughs> I don't know why you said it out loud. In the text message, it seemed a little bit less creepy. It's it still felt creepy. I looked it's, at my phone lingering. like once all day long, and I saw a George sandwich, and I was like, I'm, "You know what? That was enough times." And I put my phone back down, and I left. That was it? I, I couldn't have any more. And he still showed up to talk to all you good people. So I missed I my fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did. We cover with Falcons, Panthers. Are we good? Yeah, yeah, they're we good did. enough. Yeah, yeah. Bears, Browns. <laughs> yes, yes. Great game. Awesome. Back Has there been a great again. game? Has there been a great game in this window yet? Like, let's be honest. Is there a great game in football this year? Like, there's some decent ones true. at the end of the week. I think every team is so. Oh yeah, Eagles. Uh-huh. I hope they get pooped on again. I will Who say. Knows what... In our group chat, you guys were blowing up to the point where I was like, I'm going to have to mute this group chat because I got to go to bed and you would not stop talking Eagles. And then I typed hashtag we them boys and you guys didn't text again. Like, that was it. You just stopped. <laughs> you, you found the repellent. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that was it. They just started texting each other like, this guy, I hate him. Why? Why does he have to be a dick? Like, I don't even know why he's back on this show, but here we are. He's on the logo. Hashtag so, we them boys. Mean, there. It. Um, I'm anyway. the angry one. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty it's pretty true to life. If we're being on, <laughs> I'm sad. I, mean, I am See, definitely the angry one. Life. <laughs> but why is Cody the happy, cheery one? Cody never happy cheers. Like Cody will watch his team have this big comeback victory and be like, "That was pretty cool." Does that Cody was, smile? That was cool. And Cody will also watch his team lose like seventy to nothing and be like. It's kind of what I expected. Yeah, this is what I expected. <laughs> I don't. Why is he the yay? Like that's not him. <laughs> I mean, let's also. Dude, I'm getting so he's fat. the one that made the, like the logo. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, off the rails. That's... that's what I'm here for. I mean, I just had a flashback to like sixth grade and living in nostalgia at the moment. <laughs> Where are we at right now? <laughs> Bears Brown. So this is still more exciting than Bears Brown stock. If we're being honest. <laughs> Uh, it's somehow I mean, like even after everything, Joe Flacco at quarterback, the Bears are still underdogs <laughs> with Justin Fields and everybody good to go. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where to go here. Bears side of the ball, you can play Justin Fields and you can play DJ Moore. Brown side of the ball, you can play Jerome Ford. I'm not playing Joe Flacco, but sure, he's doing good. I don't want to play anyone else. No, thanks. I mean, play Joe Flacco over Patrick Mahomes. Go tell me if you win your championship, man. He's set 75 years old and dropping dimes. Like, give the man a chance. 
Hey, don't worry. I had a moment yesterday where I thought the Ravens pulled the biggest FU moment and signed Joe Flacco from the Browns practice squad because Adam Schefter put he signed to the Ravens instead of the Browns. So it's amazing the power that Schefter has and when it's used in a negative way like that. Yeah, creating right? havoc. <laughs> I, I said it before the show, but I want to say it here as well. I think this is going to be an awful week for the Bears. All right. And I'm saying this because I think the Bears are truthfully going to win. And I think the Panthers are going to win. So not only are, are their stocks rising up, but I just think that, or from the Panthers side, they're going to get a better pick, I guess, or a worse pick for the Bears. So uh, I, I think the Panthers and Bears are winning this week. Well, the Panthers are the Panthers are so bad that they, they can win two games, I think, and still be the number one overall pick guaranteed. Um, so the Bears are looking good there at least. But um yeah, I don't know what else to really say. Yeah. Uh throw in Joku in the bucket too. Um sorry. Uh we good. That's it for me. Yeah. Dude, I honestly I looked ahead to the rest of the game slate and like they all suck. Like the rest of the one o'clock is is garbage. Most of the four o'clock is garbage. This is gonna be a bad week of football for the first round of the playoffs. Uh thank God we have fantasy to uh distract us from these these terrible games. And I thought uh Raiders and Chargers was gonna be a terrible game. I was not excited for that one at all. I was like, oh good, Easton Stick versus Aiden O'Connell. Can't wait. And then it turned into a Madden game. So, you know, maybe I'll be surprised. We'll see. I mean, I think the next game on our slate is probably the best game of the window, and it's Buccaneers and Packers. Um, I mean, Packers have shown some promise. The Bucks went from one of the best teams in the league to a like, four-game losing streak to playing pretty solid again. So hopefully if they stay on the right track, this can be a good game. This is also the only game of the 1 o'clock window with an over-under over 40, and it's set at 42 and a half. So that already says something, too. So is um, Baker Mayfield There might MVP? be a couple. Like... Is he a shoe? I mean, no, because no, <laughs> but also because like the Buccaneers still have a decent team. Like their team left over from Tom Brady is did not have a ton of turnover, which is why they're playing better than like a lot of people just counted about immediately when it's like Brady retired. They're done. They still have a solid defense. They might not be playing up to par every week, but they still have a solid defense and they still have Mike Evans who. Cody and I were talking about is like potential Hall of Famer. He's still putting up thousand yards a season. Chris Godwin hasn't has been living up. Famer, but... No. Yeah. So that's my question is where is Chris Godwin? What happened to him? What what is going on? Like, I don't care if it's a different quarterback, different system. Like he completely disappeared to the point where, like, pretty much any rankings you see, I, I told you about my dynasty league where I have guys like George Pickens and Jerry Judy, and those guys are ranked above Chris Godwin pretty much every single week. Where Godwin should be one of my top wide receivers, but he's just, you, you can't play him. You feel like you can't bench him because of his name, but you just can't play him. I completely agree. It's it's disappointing as a, even a Penn State fan and seeing Godwin. I thought he would be a, up there with Evans. I thought it would be a very close one too. And fantasy wise, you, you can't, you're right. You can't start Godwin with confidence and barely at all. Like he's on that fringe. If there was somebody that you needed on the waiver wire that like you had no other option. See, he would come across my mind as like, I'm comp not going to confidently play him the rest of the season. Probably. So do I need him at this point? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was going to go along, right along the lines, but can't be said with, I'd be cool with dropping him um, because he hasn't scored more than 10 points since week eight. We're in week 15. It's super sad 15? to see. He's he's involved to a point. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I really don't know. He's that. involved to a point every single week. But like he's averaging like six and a half, seven points since then. It's absolutely insane. Well, I guess that's a, enough complaining about him. Uh, Rashad White seems <laughs> to be a pretty solid start. He's not going to be your like. He's not going to be the reason you win your matchup. You're not going to be like, oh, my God, Rashad White's 40 points is the reason I won. But Rashad White has been a solid starter every week. There, You can start with confidence. Um, if you have two elite running backs, you can bench him. But I feel confident starting White. And I'm sorry if you guys can see you my curtain moving like... or if you hear fighting. <laughs> like, 
I, they won't stop. Sorry. Where where do you think that Rashad White is? Um, he's running back blank right now in the air. Uh, I'd say like 15. Can be. I, I'm going to go around that same. I would say 12. Would you believe me if I say he's running back four? Oh, he's running back four. <laughs> Ew, I just pulled up his stats. He's so good. <laughs> He's yeah. literally hasn't had single Start digit points Start. since week six. <laughs> Start him. <laughs> See, like you're like if, back in the beginning of the year, I was like, yo, this dude gets so many opportunities and he can't do anything. And then as soon as I made that like a public statement, he's like, I'll show you and has not scored less than 10 since week six. Like absolutely insane how he's turned it on. And but I don't think the crazy thing can is, just bench him. Hasn't had single digit points since week six. However, hasn't broken a hundred like has only broken a hundred yards rushing twice all year long, which a hundred seems to be like that standard of like a really good running day is a hundred. But I guess my question would be, are we setting a new standard for running backs? Is a hundred yards no longer like the standard you're hoping to get from running back because of the committees, because of the reliance on receiving? Like, is that gone? That's a I, fair I, I, statement. Yeah, with like the committee maybe in play, maybe. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you tell me a running back scored or ran for 80 yards, I it's a good day by me. And it used to be like, eh, that's an okay, mediocre, but I'm, I'm thrilled if my running back has 80 at this point. The other thing that's like I'm looking at here, he has 745 yards rushing on the year, which probably isn't ranking too high, but knowing how like Zach Moss is still on the top five, maybe that's pretty high. Um, he's also got 419 yards receiving and 48 catches. So like he's being used in the past game a lot more than a lot of backs. Probably I'd have to pull up actual stat, like receiving stats for running backs, but his overall total yards, when you look at it that way, he might even be averaging about a hundred yards a game if you combine rushing and receiving. So it looks a little bit better when you look at it that way, as opposed to just looking at his straight rushing numbers. I told you that since week six, that man has only broken 100 yards twice. Would you believe it that Christian McCaffrey, since week six, has only broken 100 yards twice? The number one league's leading rusher, the guy that we are like running back one, he's above everybody else, has only broken 100 yards twice since week four. <laughs> and the big I mean, difference it's... would have to be Rashad White has seven touchdowns. McCaffrey has what, 17? <laughs> but 112, I think. Uh, <laughs> plus, he has like all the that. receiving. But it's just crazy. And that's why I was saying earlier when you were saying, like, he was running back three. Like, oh, but is that impressive this year? <laughs> like, this year, I feel like rushing guards are just embarrassing. It's true. So that's why we're in fantasy. We're looking at rushing plus receiving and all those touchdowns, too. Um, but anyway, Rashad White's been great. Packers side of the ball. Um, Jaden Reed's been fantastic. We're looking like we're not going to see um, Christian Watson this week. I think Jaden Reed's still a good play. And then in their running back room, we have Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, both questionable. Um, hope you have the one that plays because you can play the one that plays, but the Buccaneers are still good against the run too. So don't particularly love it. If both play. I'm not going to lie. I'm not playing either of them. Regardless, I have nope. Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon in one league and I have had the 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 wonderful joy of getting to pick which one to start or if to start one. And I've gotten to the point where the last like five weeks, I just don't start one of them. I don't like them. Um, I don't trust them. Even if one of them's out. I, I mean, I've had that instance before where I'm like, Aaron Jones is out. Let's throw AJ Dillon in the lineup. And he gets me two points. I mean, it's just, I, I don't trust him right now. I don't think you have to start one if the other one's out. You're not wrong, and I guess I actually do have a league where I'm in the play playoffs that Aaron Jones has started on that team, I think, three weeks all year. And this week, I'm benching him again and he, I, because I have Derrick Henry, Kyron Williams, and Devon Achan. Um, so, but waiver wire pickups that have clear priority over Aaron Jones is somebody you drafted in the second round. That's been maybe biggest bust of the year. Agreed. It's up there. Yeah, it's definitely up there. Uh, one more one o'clock game, and it is the Houston Texans and the Tennessee Titans. Tyler, take it away. 
All right. Well, I think the Sorry, most interesting left. thing about this game is uh, CJ Stroud is doubtful. Uh, Davis Mills is most likely going to be the quarterback. So Davis Mills against Will Levis. Uh, you know, the Titans have been absolute buns on defense all year, except against the Dolphins. Uh, for some reason, they just played the Dolphins really well. But I don't feel like this is the same game. It is divisional. Um, it is. Um, it, it's not an elite team. So I feel like, oh, hello to Kepi's dog, by the way. We're getting all the dogs involved today. Um, but it's not an elite team, so I don't feel like the Titans are going to play on a next level. The Texans should still be able to do something on offense, but the issue is how much are they going to do uh, with Davis Mills in there? And if they do, who are they going to trust? I mean, Noah Brown has been one of C.J. Stroud's go-to guys, but that doesn't mean that Mills will have that same connection with him. He might have a connection with somebody else on that team. So uh, I think the Texans offense is the most interesting one to try to decipher. I think the loss of tank Dell is the loss of the Texans. The season's over in my opinion for them. I don't think, I mean, even if CJ Stroud comes back here, I don't see them going to that competitive level. I mean, tank Dell was his own entity and then Nico Collins was his own entity. And together they created that great um, offense that he could sling it to anybody at that point opened up so much for him on, on offense. But if it's Davis Mills, even t- this week and moving forward, I, I think the uh, the season's over. Ta- or Davis Mills, if he is the starter for Sunday, which I guess it's technically to be determined still, he is 5-20 and 20 in his lifetime career straight up. And the fact that He's the Titans so are only minus 130 money line right now, I like it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, That's I won't lie. With... That. With Titans no, um, yeah, the Titans are favored. With no context, you're like, Houston is an underdog against Tennessee. And then you see no C.J. Stroud, probably. Davis Mills hasn't really put it together besides a couple of games in his career. No Tank Dell, which has been the case for a few weeks. Nico Collins and Noah Brown, both questionable. Like, the Texans are beat up bad. Yeah. But that being said, I'm only playing. Yeah, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to be honest with you, because like as a Titans fan, I'm supposed to hate Houston, and, and I get that. But Houston is one of those teams that they've really never done anything. They've never been good. They've never had those glory days. And I feel like most football fans try to root for the underdog when they're not rooting for their own team. And the Texans have always been that underdog. And CJ Stroud is fun to watch. Tank Dell is fun to watch. The Texans, when they are together are fun to watch. It's actually an interesting team. And to to know how bad they were the last few years, like laughable bad. And now to be in this position where if those guys were still healthy, they are legitimate playoff threats. Um, it's really sad to see that fall apart. I mean, I, I guess there's a lot of sad things on this season. We would have liked to see what the Bengals could have been with Joe Burrow. We would have liked to see what, uh, the Texans could be if they made the playoffs. We would have liked to see what the Jets would be with Aaron Rodgers. And we really, we kind of got let down on a lot of things. Anthony Richardson, we got let down on wanting to see what he would do with the Colts. So we did get let down on a lot of things. But I think this is, to me, one of the biggest ones because we got to see how great they could be. And then it got taken away from us. So I, I feel like this is really disappointing as a football fan. Bright future in Houston, though, uh, because we could could be getting back to the days back when we had Deshaun Watson, Will Fuller, DeAndre Hopkins in Houston with the CJ Stroud, Tank Dell, and Nico Collins connection because two of them are rookies and Nico Collins is in his third year, I want to say. So long time to go still with that trio. So I'm interested to see how it works out in the future. But I'm also agree. I would have liked to see what they could have done if they made the playoffs with that group this year. And real quick, tighten side of the ball, start Derrick Henry. Um if you want to, if you need a flex, D hop is a good flex. Him and Will Levis have a good connection uh, outside of those two. You're not starting anybody. D hop has been saving me in a couple of places the last few weeks. So he may have to continue in my lineup in some places. So glad you mentioned him four o'clock window. Biggest spread of the week. I believe with the San Francisco 49ers traveling to the Arizona Cardinals Cardinals underdogs by 12 and the over under on this one, they go up a lot in this window. 48. Uh, only significant injury, Hollywood Brown questionable, but he surprisingly still ha- hasn't showed up since Kyler Murray's been back, which is, I was not expecting. 
Um, I mean, we're playing all our 49ers and we're playing James Conner, who's returning. And I think that's it. Are you starting Trey McBride? I miss Trey McBride. Yep. See, there you go. Yeah. Trey McBride. I think. I'd, I mean, I, you can see how much that the Cardinals like him once they release Zach Ertz after they gave him a chance. Yeah, I think he's earned himself a spot out of the bucket. I think he's a guy that you have to put in if you have him on your team every week. <laughs> I think that's bucket. it for this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dartboard bucket. It's funny. Like You were on an episode, and you started the bucket, and then you were gone for a while, and the bucket has lived on. <laughs> <laughs> the bucket will never die. <laughs> I so we probably bucket. thought that about the dartboard, but now we're going to have a dartboard with a bucket underneath it or something, right? Like, it's got a... <laughs> I don't know. We're just going to throw buckets at a dartboard. Like, who cares? Yep. It's our <laughs> podcast. We do what we want. Um, we're going to throw yeah, buckets are, are at so, a dartboard. <laughs> 49ers, we already know who we're starting on that one. Everybody, basically. Uh, start the whole roster. Start Kyle Shanahan if you want. I don't care. Uh, moving on. Commanders and Rams. Uh, wow. Exciting. Uh, so thrilled. Uh, Kyron Williams, Cooper Cub, Puka, like, are we we like these guys outside of that. Is, is there anybody on the Rams that you like? You guys probably like Matt Stafford more than Patrick Mahomes, but. I feel like I'm against the commanders. Guys. Yeah. No, honestly, yeah. I'm starting Matt Stafford over Patrick Mahomes. Because guess what? It is a good, Here, here's something good week for him to be streamed. Yeah. One, it's against the commanders, so the matchup is great. But two, uh, a mid-level quarterback throwing to Puka, who looks elite this year, Cooper Cup, who we know is elite, and a solid tight end in Tyler Higby versus an elite quarterback throwing to one elite tight end and then what else? Like Rice has been good. I wouldn't say he's elite yet, but he's been good. I feel like the weapons that Stafford has is more valuable than the name of Patrick Mahomes. Um, so I'm going, I'd go Matt Stafford over Mahomes. And that's saying a lot because I hate Matt Stafford. Well, don't hate him, but there's I just legitimately think a chance better. that Rishi Rice, who's the number one receiver on the Chiefs, is the wide receiver four for the Rams. Like I might even take Tutu Atwell over him. Tutu? I cut him in a dynasty league. I was pretty upset with myself, but I was in desperate <laughs> need for a pickup. So. Hey, but uh, I'm hey, seeing that grab him again uh, but. on the opposite side of the ball. It is looking like Brian Robinson is going to be officially out with his hamstring injury. Would you guys, if you needed to, depending on your flex situation, grab Antonio Gibson? Would you start Antonio Gibson is the question. No, he is a pass catching back that could provide value if they are in a losing game script still the way the lines are heading in the projections, but it is one guy to consider since he is going to be pretty much the only running back in that offense. Personally, the only place I consider Brian Robinson is daily fantasy. Again, trying to get somebody cheap uh, so that you can load up the rest of your lineup with stars. I can't imagine Gibson being worth that much on daily fantasy uh, outside of daily fantasy. No, I, I don't want him personally. I, I have him in a dynasty league. I could start him. I'm still not. I just find it hard to believe that your team is in that much turmoil that you feel like you should start him. Um, Cause unless you're in that much turmoil, you really shouldn't be starting a guy like him. Like you shouldn't be, even if you have a guy like Jalen Warren, like I'm starting Warren over and, and Warren is a backup. I'm starting Warren over Gibson. Um, but if your team is so beat up to the point where you need to start uh, a guy like Antonio Gibson, how did you make the playoffs? Like good for you. Good for you. Teams that have Brian Robinson probably made the playoffs because he's another guy where it's like, ask me where Brian Robinson is on the top running back. Because I'm pretty sure it's like running back five. Um, <laughs> so that's another one where it's like, that's actually a pretty big loss, even though it doesn't feel like it is. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. I don't feel comfortable playing Gibson. And I, I, I don't even really feel comfortable adding Gibson unless it's like a, oh, I know my opponents in running back hell and you're going to play some defense and just, him on your bench for a week and then drop him after. I don't think that's a bad move if you see that your opponent has running back problems. One thing to watch on the betting end of this game is uh, the lines originally did open up as Rams minus one and a half. That has since bumped up to Rams minus six and a half. 
So looking a little bit deeper into the the, the bets here, there have been over 30,000 bets placed on this game. And it's looking like 90% of the money is coming in on the Rams. So if there's ever a time for Vegas to be really happy and earn their money back, because this has been a year of the favorites, this is, could be the game. So I, I don't know if the, I'm confident the Rams win or the commanders winning outright, but I kind of like them covering that six and a half if that's truly where all the money's going right now. That's a really big jump. Vegas Five is points. Right. Vegas is always and right. I, that's true. Yeah. So who knows what's what'll happen in that game? All right. I like that. We can move on. Last four o'clock game, as I think we're going a little long here, so we'll kind of keep picking it up. Dallas Cowboys, Buffalo Bills. This should be the game of the week if the Bills keep playing up to how they have been the last few. Um, and they're actually favored over the Dallas Cowboys by two. I guess technically, if you give them the three point home favorite, whatever, they're technically, you know, underdogs by one, but that's getting a little too deep into it. This should be a really good, good one. I hope so. This is uh this is what I don't know. Do we believe in the Bills? Do we think that they're back? Do we think that they are who they are? I've seen so many things where it's like, I still don't trust the Bills, but then I've seen videos where it's like, yes, you can talk about Allen's interceptions, but his touchdown to interception ratio is through the roof, especially over the last few years. Nobody has a better touchdown to interception ratio than Josh Allen. Like that's like, that's crazy. Um, So I don't know. I want to believe that they're back, but it also seems like that, team isn't together and we've seen that when teams are fighting with each other when you don't believe in each other that they don't seem to work as well and i I feel like josh allen and Diggs kind of have this this are still butting heads a little bit so i don't know if the bills are are totally back but then again it seemed like Diggs and allen have been butting heads for two years and this is the first time that we really seen them struggle um i think dallas is playing out of their minds right now but Anytime you see a team playing this hot for this long, they usually have a fall off at some point. They get too high and mighty, and then they just tank. Even if it's just for one game. I mean, we saw it with the Eagles this year. I mean, as much as you might not like to talk about it, like Eagles are riding high and mighty, and then they lose to the Jets. And then they get back on their high horse, and then they lose two big games. Now I feel like the Eagles are really going to pick it up because they had those downfalls, that those humbling moments. But I feel like the Cowboys are now due for that. So this this is a tough one. It's weird to think what what would this game look like or feel like going to the four o'clock window if the Bills or if I should even say if Tony didn't have his foot on the line, if the Bills would have lost that game last Sunday, where would this line be? What would we be thinking going to this matchup? Because right now the Cowboys are underdogs. And I, I don't know if I'd feel the same way if the Bills would have lost again to the Kansas City Chiefs. So uh, I, I am probably going to start all the Cowboys I have. No matter what, the over under is mm-hmm. fifty right now. There's projected a lot of points there. Um, Bill side, I, I I definitely agree with St- Diggs, Allen. If you have them, the one question mark I have though is Gabe Davis, and he's either going to put up a zero or he's going to go for two or three touchdowns. So he's a tough one that I've always debated going in, especially in uh, in my redraft leagues as well as dynasty. I feel like when it comes to Davis, you just can't trust him enough to put him in the lineup because he's thrown too many zeros up on the board for me to want to be like, I want to risk it in the fantasy playoffs to play Gabe Davis. Um, and I hope you have better options for there, but I think your point on like, if Tony wasn't off sides, how much different we think about the bills. Cause I was going to go on this whole thing. Like they lost the game to the Bengals and then they lost to the Broncos and they made the offensive coordinator change. And things have been a lot better since then. Like they blew out the jets. One of the few teams to put up 30 plus on the jets. They went into the Eagles and they lost in overtime. And that's Losing to a good team. That's not one where you're like, oh, bill, panic mode for the Bills. It's like they put up 34 against the Eagles and lost in overtime. That's a great game when you consider where both teams are at. And then they went into Kansas City and they won. But if they did lose that game and you see their record being below 500, yeah, I think there's a point to you saying like if they end up losing that, there's a much different vibe coming in. And that makes me think a lot more towards the Cowboys – should be favored or this game should be leaning a lot more towards the Cowboys than we're thinking. Yeah. I was actually really surprised to see that the Cowboys weren't favorites the way that both of these teams have been playing lately. I expected the Cowboys to be probably a three point favorite was the way I would have picked it. Um, But I mean, it makes sense. I guess everybody's just waiting for that. The bills to be the bills again. 
because you know they have the talent, you know they have the coaching, you know they have the roster to do it. It's do they have the momentum? Do are they in the right headspace? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be the big test. If the Bills win this game, I'd say they're truly back. They're making a run. They're going to make the playoffs. I, I believe it. Uh, if the Bills lose this game, their season's over. Like, they're just done. I agree. That's, yes, yeah, so this means a lot to Buffalo, which also could mean something because it's a lot, means a lot to Buffalo and Dallas is riding a high right now. That could also be a momentum shifter that you see happen sometimes in the league. Two more games to go. We got Sunday night football with the Baltimore Ravens traveling down south to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Jags have Trevor Lawrence still good to go. He's not on the injury report anymore. Travis Etienne was limited all week. Um, I can go double check really quick. They didn't have their final injury report out while you guys talk about this one. Uh, Where are you looking at in this game? I honestly feel like the Jags have been disappointing to me this year. ETN is not doing quite as much as I thought he would, but he's still an easy start. Like you're still going to throw him in your lineup, but I expect him to be a much bigger player this year. Trevor Lawrence feels, I don't want to say bust, but he feels like a disappointment compared to what I expected from him out of college. Uh, Cause now he, there's no more excuses. I feel like he came out of college. He went onto a bad team. You had all the excuses. Oh, well, it's a bad team. Oh, well, it's a bad coach. Oh, well, it's a bad line. Oh, well, he has no receivers. Well, the excuses are gone. I mean, he has the coach. He has the line. He has the team. He has the receivers. I mean, they were the expectation to win the division. They were, and they still are leading the division and most likely will win it. Um, But I still don't feel like we're seeing what we expected from the Jags this year. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm different. Maybe you guys see it differently, but I feel like the Jags have been a little bit disappointing and that goes for fantasy as well. Uh, I don't fully trust guys like Calvin Ridley. Um, I just, I don't trust them as much in my lineup as much as I want to. And I, I completely agree. Cause I felt that same way in the beginning of the year um, with the Trevor Lawrence luck, you know, and he's starting to put it together a little bit, but truthfully, I think it, it stands out more without Christian Kirk. I think he was a bigger part of that offense than, most people give the team credit or give him credit for. Uh, And I think without that weapon, it does limit them on, you know, Calvin really is going to get guarded a little bit more. Evan Ingram is going to get a little guarded more. We saw Zay Jones take a step. He could be somebody that would be an interesting start if you absolutely have to. But um, I I agree with you in that lines that I think they're not as legit as they, they seem. Yeah. I think it was crazy to me as well. Cause like, another guy on that team is Evan Engram and we expected a bigger year from him. I mean, he was a top 10 drafted tight end and we expected him to be uh, maybe even an every week starter for certain teams. And then it's two weeks ago, I was watching red zone and Evan Engram gets a touchdown. And I'm like, and he gets his first of the year. Like what mm-hmm. week 13? Like what is happening? It's just, I feel like all around the Jags have been a bit disappointing, but they're not the only team here. We do have the Ravens as well. Um, on the Ravens side of the ball. So the guy I want to ask about and Kempi, I feel like, uh, I feel like you're a good person to ask here, but what do you think of Keaton Mitchell? Do you take a chance on him in any league at all uh, with his recent surging? Honestly, I, I have a league where I have Keaton Mitchell. I also have uh, Gus Edwards in that league. And I, I hate it to be honest because he is just throwing in that, that question mark of a committee because when all those injuries started happening at the beginning of the years or beginning of the year with the Ravens running backs, it was like Gus Edwards. This is the Gus bus. Let's keep on rolling here. But Keaton Mitchell is a legit talent that I think you really have to take a look at. I know George posts those uh, snap logs, kind of like the percentage of how they're on the field or how many times they're on the field. That's something to keep an eye on. And I think I would start Keaton Mitchell, depending on the matchup over Gus Edwards. It, it is a tough debate, but, uh, I guess that's not really a good answer for you. If I have to make that decision, I guess I uh, I go Keaton Mitchell. So I feel like Keaton Mitchell is kind of like, uh, uh, not directly, but Devon Achan. Like, I feel like it's kind of similar in the sense of you have the starting running back who's a little bit older, and but you expect him to be the starter. And the backup running back is a young, exciting rookie who, when he does get the ball, shows just exciting flashes like he he really does just take off and show you something that the starter isn't giving you now they're not doing enough to bench the starter 
but I feel like Keaton Mitchell. I feel like wow, we have four. <laughs> we have two Georges now. Apparently, Georges two, two Georges, two Tyler's. <laughs> this is no longer a sandwich. Uh, open face, I guess. Um, anyway. But yeah, I feel like Keaton Mitchell is that exciting player. And it's one of those situations where it sucks because it's like you want to put him in your lineup because you know he he's going to do something with the carries he does get. But you want to bench him because he might only get five to ten touches in the game, maybe. Uh, so it's it's definitely a tougher situation. How about the receivers, though, Kempe? Any of these Ravens receivers are starting? I, I, you look at last week's game, you, you want to start basically everyone because they lit up that uh, Rams uh, defense. I mean, you saw long touchdowns to OBJ. Zay Flowers uh, was going in there as well. Uh, Isaiah Likely was nice. It, Isaiah Likely, unfortunately, I think you, you have to start if you were an Andrews owner and you lost him. If you're not an Andrews owner, you just kind of lucked into it. I think he is that top of the bucket, I guess you could say. Um, but for the most part, I think Zay Flowers is my favorite out of those wide receivers. Where would you fall? <laughs> I think George is finally back. Hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> I will say I've started Zay Flowers pretty much all year long in a dynasty league of mine. Um, again, my receivers are kind of booty. So I, I, I've played Zay Flowers and I haven't looked back. I mean, no, the guy's not putting up elite numbers where it's like he has to be in your lineup, but I feel like he's doing enough where you feel comfortable putting him in your flex um, at this point in the season. And George, you were gone forever. Do you, who's your must start out of this matchup? And then we can go on to the Eagles and Seahawks. Uh, does Lamar Jackson count as that? Cause I mean, I, I heard like on and off what you guys said about Keaton Mitchell and Zay flowers and stuff. I agree with all of that. And Keaton Mitchell has been getting more and more percentage of the snaps uh, for, you know, I, I, over the last how many weeks. So I think Cody's, prediction of he could be this year's Jarek McKinnon might be a little bold, but he is somebody that's moving into the conversation of flex starter as we get further. (laughs) I'm sorry. He could be this year's Jarek McKinnon. Like, oh, oh no. You say Uh, that, but Jarek McKinnon McKinnon was putting up like 25 a week during the fantasy playoffs last year. That was what he was trying to compare to. It just doesn't sound flashy. Okay. Okay. But let's say, so you know how when we play pickup football together and you catch a big touchdown, everyone's like, oh, my God, yo, Kelsey just made this awesome catch, and they start relating you to, like, NFL players. If you made a good play playing pickup football and it's like, oh, dude's going Jarek McKinnon out here, you feel excited at all, even a little bit? Or are you like, oh, all right, thanks. You're going home and crying. I mean, I have the yes. athleticism of some 80-year-old man, so I personally would, but no, you're right. <laughs> Like guys called me Jarek McKinnon today, so um, pretty legit. Like no, you know, no one's excited. You peaked in life when you're called Jarek McKinnon. (laughs) (laughs) Top tier right there. Sorry, Jarek McKinnon. I know you're listening right now. Uh, I don't mean to be pooping on you right now, but you're not elite level yet. You can, you might get there. It's just funny to hear the sentence. This year's Jarek McKinnon. It's just weird to me. I'm sorry. He could be next year's Aiden O'Connell. Like, oh, <laughs> oh no. Stop oh, it. Man. Aiden McConnell versus the Chargers. Just add on that a little bit. I don't know. It's a little uh, bit. One more. still only 25 points. <laughs> they didn't need it. <laughs> one more game in the slate. It is the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle Seahawks. Normally, this is my game to preview, but I know Kempe is also an Eagles fan, so I'm going to throw it on Kempe to lead us off. I think you you start all the Eagles that you have. Um, obviously, all the backfield is a, uh, yeah. I'm t- saying even Rashad Penny, Quez Rashad Watkins. Penny, Rashad Penny yeah. revenge game coming up right this week. No, um, the the running back is the is the tough one to say in general. But I, I mean, you got to start Smith. You have to start Brown. You're starting Goddard. Um, you're starting Hurts. You, you almost it's a lock for for all sides of those Eagles. There, the running back is the only question mark. Seattle not having a great run defense. Um, it's tough to t- say what's going to happen here. Uh, my biggest question comes on the Seattle side, though, with Geno still questionable, I believe. Uh, are you confidently starting your Seahawks? Um, probably Metcalf, but how about that Tyler Lockett? 
Uh, just a little side note: a Rashad Penny anytime touchdown is plus eight fifty. That's Bug that's at where we're looking at right here. So, hundred bucks <laughs> plus eight fifty. You got this. Uh, no, Tyler Lockett. I will say I did pick him up in a league. Somebody actually dropped him, um, and I picked him up. He's a potential flex play for me because my my receivers are are struggling a little bit this week. But still, I don't love starting Tyler Lockett unless I absolutely have to. This Eagles secondary has given up a lot more points than than is expected. It's supposed to be such a good defense, and you'd be surprised to see some of the points that they gave up. Uh, however, I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. I feel like the Eagles have been stomped on two weeks in a row, and if I know the Eagles from watching them in years past, this is going to piss them off, and you're going to see a whole new Eagles team come out this week. I really feel like the Eagles are going to absolutely dominate. Uh, I feel like they are going to win on in all phases of the game. Um Offense, defense, special teams. I, I I think that the Eagles, I would take their point spread right now. I would not want to start any um, Seahawks right now unless I absolutely had to. DK Metcalf, yes. But also in tough games like this, we've also seen people get in DK's head and he really throws a temper tantrum and really is not himself. So there's also a chance because of such a big game that uh, DK is not a really good play either. Did you see that uh, Kyle Shanahan last week was giving a Christmas present to anybody who pissed off DK and then he got him ejected? Yeah, that was amazing. Nice. <laughs> Real quick, uh, if, if you have yep. to. Sharps, Walker, neither. Which one are you choosing? They're both active and healthy. Let's say that's the yeah, that's how it's that's like how it's leaning right now. Uh, probably Walker. I feel like that's who they're gonna give it to. I personally like Charbonnet better. Um, I wish that I don't want Walker to be injured or anything, but I wish we could have got to see a little bit longer of just Charbonnet and really get to see him feature just to know what we had in him. But, um, I'd probably go with Walker. Charbonnet is an interesting case to me going forward. Cause he was not good when he was given opportunities behind Walker. When he was the starter, he looked really good. Um, and now they're both back again. I'm with Tyler going I mean, with Snyder. I have to remember to keep saying that this episode. Uh, going with Walker, um, not Sharps, and hoping that they give him a couple more carries than last week because they were about a 50 50 split last week. But Walker was still coming back, working back from that oblique injury. So just like most running backs, though, this year, like Charbonnet also, I was watching the game and I'd be like, dude, Charbonnet's killing it. This dude looks so good. He's really making some plays. I wonder where he's at right now. And it's like, he's at six, six points. Yeah. It's like <laughs> midway through the third quarter. And it's like, oh, he's crushing it. Uh, some guys, you just, feel like they touch really the ball weird, one weird. time and they have like a million points. And then there's other guys where it's like. Jameer Gibbs. This guy's been great Jameer all game. Gibbs it's like that. Like, I don't understand. And yeah. you're like this dude's crushing. He's got to be at 30 points right now. And you're like, he's at two. That 20 yeah. yard run was all two of his points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like what? And then it's like, you're one play into the game and Christian McCaffrey had one, had that one play and he's already at 20. And it's like, but that's not even possible. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey has two carries okay. for 30 yards. No touchdowns. He's at 37 points. What? <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, what? <laughs> It's like they're they just gift him those points and then he'll eventually earn them. But you just it doesn't you don't see it ever build up. It's just there immediately. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, two more things before we get out of here. Why don't we jump into some survivor picks? All right, I can lead us off here because you haven't heard me talk in a while. Uh, my survivor pick for this week is going to be the Rams. Um, so I know there's the, some back and forth during that game, but I don't see how the Rams could lose to the commanders. The only thing that makes me sketched out about it is the fact that the commanders are coming off of the bye, So they're more well-rested, but they're down their best player on offense in Brian Robinson. So I think it's a pretty safe pick. Yeah. My picks, the Rams. I am going to go with the Danny Cutlets killer. It's going to be the Saints in the Superdome that are going to humble Danny DeVito. Hopefully his agent doesn't call me up. Hopefully I don't get killed by the mafia later. But this is going to be the game that shows Danny DeVito is just a gimmick. He's going to get crushed this week against the Saints. I love how it's we're just happen. assuming it's Danny DeVito. <laughs> like we don't even it's call Danny DeVito anymore. <laughs> I, honestly, I said I said Tommy DeVito when I talked about that matchup. That's the first time I've said Tommy DeVito since the first time we heard his name. 
He's been Danny DeVito since then. <laughs> <laughs> Danny DeVito would be more fun to watch on the football field. Absolutely. It'd be fantastic. And I, and I mean, it's been it. fun seeing this dude's parents and manager and whatever else out there. But like, I still think Danny DeVito would be more fun. <laughs> Tyler, uh, we ran your long, feeling? George. So, uh, oh gosh, my wallet is so dead. This, it's as my wallet's as tired as I look. So, <laughs> well, let's go. Set. Cha-ching. <laughs> you have to be feeling a little bit better. Time, <laughs> first time I saw that. <laughs> I'm so glad that you got the live reaction of the first time that we saw spend Tyler's money. <laughs> Cody went above and beyond it. for that one. Props to him. You have to be feeling a little bit better about this week because Kempi, our resident betting, resident betting expert is here and he's going to put his pick down for, well, first you, you're the one that picked uh, what we're going to be betting on this week. So enter that and who you got. All right, so to, in order to help us out here, I we are going to be picking solely the Saturday games. It's that beautiful time of year when Saturday football comes back to us. So let's bet on Saturdays because that way if we win, we got money to play with on Sunday. If we lose, let's try to win it back on Sunday. All right, uh, so we're either way we're betting on Sunday. <laughs> we're going on Sunday yeah, either way, but hopefully we have, we have some money in our pockets here. But uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I will start it off here since I have the early game here with the Vikings and... Uh, Bengals, I am going to pick TJ Hawkinson to score anytime touchdown at plus 180. The Bengals are the worst team against the tight end. I think when Jay Judd is back out there as well, we are going to see uh, TJ Hawkinson get a little more wide open in that red zone, and he's going to run it in or catch it in, whatever you call it. Touchdown, TJ Hawkinson. All right. All right. Fair enough. So I'm going to stick with you a little bit here. Same position, a guy that I bet on way too much this year. Probably, if I could look at my stats, the guy I put more bets on than anybody else, and that is tight end Sam Laporta. Just love the dude. I don't know. There's something about him. He's just, he's so fun. And I'm going to, I'm going to go away from the Jameer Gibbs. I'm going to go away from the David Montgomery. I'm going to go with Sam Laporta for the anytime touchdown. I like it. And I also like the fantasy name that Kempi came up with uh, involving Sam Laporta in the World Cup. So if you guys haven't watched this episode, let's go check it out because it's a, it's a doozy. Um, I'm going to go to the Colts, um, and I'm not going to go with the Zach Moss. I'm not going to go too bold with Josh Downs. I'm going to take Michael Pittman, who I'm surprised to see his plus odds with how good he's been doing this year. I think he was plus 150. Uh, so my anytime touchdown is Michael Pittman. That, that leaves us with... Michael Pittman, Sam Laporta, and TJ Hawkinson all to score touchdowns. I'm not sure if you have this teed up or not, Tyler, but if you do, can you let the people know how much we're winning? Uh, sure can. You guys can see it. I have already placed the bet. Um, so I have $5 to win seventy-one seventy-five. It comes out to plus 1335 odds. I like this it. This is the week. This is this the week. Is we're going to get it all back for you. Finally hit. <laughs> we've been one leg off pretty much every single week. So I'm sorry about your wallet. I never actually asked you before the show. Do you have an oddball fact before we go? Or are we going to get out of here? I have no oddball fact. I am, but I'm here. I will be back with it next week. That's good to hear. Thank you. Kempi for coming on and joining us. Happy to have you back. Snyder looking forward to the fantasy playoffs and the rest of this season. Anything else to add before we get out of here? I'm going to go make some ramen noodles. Go birds. <laughs> Thank you all for listening into the Couch GM's podcast. For Tyler Snyder and Kempi, I'm George Kurt. We'll see you all next week. Ramen noodles! <laughs> <laughs>